Sometimes we forget too soon. And that has led us into a lot of problems. We are so forgetful. We forget a lot. We forget. And because we forget, it keeps us worried. We behave like orphans. We behave like men and women without God. We behave as if God hates us. We behave as if God does not answer prayers again. We behave as if that the man could not give us what we wanted. That, that is the end of the road. But the Lord is bringing a message our way this hour. A message that will spark off a mighty confidence in you. That will cause you to spread your heart. Waiting for the staring of the pool. For God wants to stare at the pool once more. Let's pray. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We thank you, Papa. What the Lord, what you have done for us, we cannot say it all. We pray this day that you sanctify your word in our heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to read this day from the book of Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel 17. I want to begin to read from verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And they were gathered at Sukkot, which belonged to Judah. And they camped between Sukkot and Azekah in Ephesdami. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and camped in the valley of Elah. And drew up in battle array to encounter the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side. While Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. Then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines, named Goliath, from God, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a bronze helmet on his head. He was clothed with scale armor, which weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He also had bronze grease on his legs and a bronze javelin slung between his shoulders. This is a very familiar passage of the Holy Writ that I like to draw your attention to this day. The Bible said the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. Um, if you are a child of God and you are born again, I want to let you know that the moment you are born again, you are born for battles. You are born for battles. You are born for battles. And we saw here that Israel, the people of God, we are ter they were terrorized by the Philistines. So much so that a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines. Who is a champion? Goliath was sophisticated. I mean, he was a sophisticated man. He was ready to tear them apart. He was ready to swallow them, so to say. I don't know what has been terrorizing you. I don't know what that thing that is available that wants to swallow you. 
I do not know the thing that has been causing you sleepless night. I, I do not know the battle. You may be here listening to me this day. You may just be a fresh graduate from a mighty battle. Or you are a prospective student of a battle. Or you're currently undergoing a battle. You are the reason for this message. I don't know what I've been terrorizing you. Something that I've been making you uncomfortable. I don't know the giant that is after your life. What is a giant? To me, a giant is anything or force that terrorizes you and makes you uncomfortable. Anything or force that terrorizes you and makes you uncomfortable is a giant. And because there is something that has been terrorizing you, there is something that has been making you uncomfortable. Listen, you are the reason for this message. Goliath came out. Harassing the people of Israel. Harassing them greatly. So much so. In fact, verse 11 says, When Saul and Israel had the wars of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were harassed. Terrorized. And then, a day came that David, the son of the, if, uh, uh, you know, the son of Ephrathi, of Bethlehem, in Judah, whose name was Jesse. He had eight sons. And then Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advancing years among men. And then the three older sons of Jesse had gone after Saul to the battle. And then David was the youngest. He went to see them at the battlefield, maybe to bring some, to give them something. And then in the presence of David, this same Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, came out again. And as he was coming out, he was saying the same words. And verse 24 says, When all the men of Israel saw the man, they fled from him and were greatly afraid. Oh my God. Is there anything you hear and you, fl you, you, you run away? Is there anything you hear and your stomach will begin to choke. Is there anything that has been terrorizing you, troubling you, giving you sorrow, making you uncomfortable? Is there any torment? You know, fear is a torment. The Bible said that we are greatly afraid. Fear is a big torment. And then, why were they afraid? Let me put it this way. They were afraid because they believed what Goliath was saying. At this moment, let me define fear. What is fear? Fear is believing what the devil is saying about your situation. Fear is believing what the devil is saying about your condition. Fear is believing the devil. But faith is believing what God is saying about you. I want you to know this. Fear is believing what the devil is saying about your case. The devil says you will die. The devil says you will not survive. The devil says your business will crush. The devil says you will not pass. That's fear. When you believe all those things and you become afraid. But faith, faith is believing what God has said. God said you will make it. And God said you will not die. God said you will be healed. God said you shall be saved. God said you shall be delivered. When David had this, the David was bold enough. He spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying, What will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away that reproach from Israel? Hey! Anything that is terrorizing you, making you uncomfortable, is a terrorist. I say he's a terrorist. He's a terrorist and a reproach. And at the end of this message, God shall take away the reproach from you, the reproach of disease, the reproach of fear, the reproach of death, those things that have been eating you up, making a nonsense out of you. Your deliverance has come. Amen and amen, amen. As I talk to you right now, I see victory ahead. I see victory ahead. I see it. Now listen to me. I want you to begin to believe God. You have not come to the end of the road. 
Yes, there are prophetic utterances in this message. The Lord will lift you from where you are to where you are supposed to be. God is going to catapult you. It will surprise you the way the battle will end. It will surprise you the way your visitation will come. It will surprise you the way the Lord will lift you and cause you to go public. Yes, it will cause you the way God will lift you and cause you to go public. Let's, let, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. I begin to pray for you right where you are listening to this message. That God will give you giant killer's mentality. Giant killer's mentality. It is time to kill giant. Tell your neighbor, it is time to kill giant. Tell whoever is around you right now, it is time to kill the giant. It is time. The giant that have been terrorizing you, making you to be afraid. The giant that have been causing you to be confused. Thus says the Lord, it is time, it is time. It is time, it is time. It is time, it is time. And David looked at it. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should taunt the armies of the living God. Oh my God. It's a pity. Elders were there, but it was the young man that had the insight. <laughs> Listen, when God wants to do a thing, He doesn't necessarily move with the elders. He doesn't necessarily move with, He moves with somebody who is flexible. I want you to be flexible in the hand of the Holy Spirit. He will give you insight. And the insight He will give you will give you the victory. Let me tell you. Listen, this young man, he made a comment that I want to draw your attention to. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, what do you mean by uncircumcised? In the first place, let me define circumcised, circumcision. Circumcision means covenant with God. A symbol that you are into a covenant with God. Uncircumcised means no covenant with God. And David, I believe, I gave. David was saying, this man is uncircumcised. In other words, the man had no covenant with Jehovah. How then can a man without a covenant begin to terrorize the people that have covenant? Oh, praise God. I want to announce to you this day, anything that is attacking you is uncircumcised. Any force attacking you is uncircumcised. Anything attacking you is uncircumcised. You have a boldness. If you are born again, you are circumcised. Because you are circumcised, I mean, I mean, you have a relationship with Jehovah. Hey, hey, the, the Lord of hosts is backing you. You are a container of the Trinity. Trinity is in you. You are a divine deposit. Oh, yes. What am I talking about? He said, when you believe, I and my father, we shall come and make our abode in you. And when the father and the son make their abode in you, and the Bible said in Corinthians, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the father and the son will come and make abode in you. Brother, it means you are a container of the Trinity. Trinity lives in you. No wonder he that is in you, therefore, is greater than the giant that is terrorizing you. He that is in you is greater than the witch that is flying across your building. He that is in you is greater than the poison they have buried somewhere for you. He that is in you, he that is in you. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Cool down. Let me cool down. Let me cool down. Let me cool down. Now listen to me. He was a young man, a young man. And, you know, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke. And he says, he was angry. David, he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And let me ask you, is there not a cause why you have decided to fix emergency praying and fasting? Is there not a cause why you have decided to go to a retreat? Is there not a cause why you have decided to come to prayer camp? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause why you have refused food for three days and three nights? Wow! Is there not a cause? Because you want God to intervene. And here, David, you know, when all he was speaking was brought to Saul the king. Saul himself was even afraid about how um, Goliath was terrorizing them. But you know, I, 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 want to, I, want to, I want to show you where I picked my topic. When the words with David spoke were heard, they told them to Saul and he sent for him. 
And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail on account of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Oh my God. Don't let your age stop you. Your age is not an obstacle. No matter how old you are, God's anointing can still come upon you for mighty things. God can come upon you to, to use you. You can become a bulldozer. A bulldozer in the hand of God. Listen to me this day. Hey, I sense God's anointing coming upon you. The Lord is making you a bulldozer. A bulldozer for the kingdom. And let me tell you, a bulldozer, receive it, receive it. As I speak right now, yes, the anointing is being released upon you. He's making you a bulldozer for the kingdom. He's making you a giant killer. A giant killer. Receive it. Let the anointing come upon you. Receive it. Let the anointing come upon you. Let the anointing come upon you. Let the anointing come upon you. You will destroy. Oh yes. It is time. It is time. It is time for demolition. To demolish anything that the father has not planted in your life. Anything the father has not planted in your life. Any power. Any language. Anything the Father has not planted, it is time, it is time. It is time to uproot them. And look at me, look at me, listen. You shall destroy them without mercy. Oh, yes. They shall be destroyed without mercy because the Father has not planted. Look at what Saul told David. You are not able to go and fight this Philistine, to fight with him. For you are but a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. Let me warn you, don't let anybody stop you. <laughs> don't let anybody stop you. Move forward. Victory is ahead. Don't let any voice stop you. Don't let anybody tell you that you are not able to go. Don't listen to a language of pessimism. Don't let them tell you you are not able. I speak to you as a servant of God. You shall conquer in this fight. I say you will win this battle. I talk to you. Somebody may have brought this step. I don't know why this step and how or why the step came into your hand. But do you see this present battle? You shall come out victoriously. Do you see this present battle? No matter the giant now, no matter how tall, no matter the sophisticated weapon that the giant is holding. Oh, I don't want to know the kind of weapon the giant is using. I don't want to know how long the giant have been fighting. But I speak to you by the authority of the word of God. Victory shall be yours. It is already finished. Glory. Amen. And I saw something. When David came to Saul. David started narrating to Saul. The motivating factor. The reason why he decided. Why he felt. That he will fight against this Philistine. The reason why. What did he say? Look at what David said. Look at the story he narrated. David said to Saul in verse 34. Your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him. And rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me. I seized him by his bread, struck him and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Since he has taunted the armies of the living God. And David said, note, dear listener, note very well. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion. <laughs> and from the paw of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine oh my God oh David said I was taking care of the sheep a lion came a bear came they wanted to take away the things I was supposed to take care of. I went after them. Delivered the sheep. 
from their hand. And he said, I have killed both the bear and the lion. <laughs> This God who delivered me from the hands of the bear and the lion. That is, this God of my past victory. <laughs> the God of my past victory. He will also deliver me from the present battle. Oh my God. I see God speaking to my heart. Oh yes, I see him speaking right now. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been sick when people gave you up? When people thought you would not survive? When people started thinking of your barrier? And all of a sudden, the finger of Yahweh came upon you on the sick bed. To the surprise of everyone, you got healed. Has God ever healed you in the past? I don't want to know the type of battle you're passing through. And let me ask you. Have you ever had an accident? Where the vehicles were assaulted? And people started asking. Did the person in this vehicle. Did the person survive? And the hand of God protected you. Nothing happened to you. You came out of that safe. Hey, have you ever been pregnant? And it was a complex one. You even thought you would not make it. But all of a sudden, in the labor room, mm, the presence of God came upon you. And you delivered safely. You were alive. And the baby was alive. Hear me, hear me very well. That God of your past delivery. That God of your past healing. The same God of your past victim. He is again. He wants to do it again in your life. He wants to deliver you again. He wants to give you another victory. Has God ever answered you before? He will answer you again. That's my message to you. Don't forget. Have you forgotten what God did in the past? Have you forgotten how God delivered you in the past? David did not forget. When people were confused, why should this young man be bold? What should be the factor? What, what, what should be the motivating factor? Why is he poised to fight the giant? He had an experience. God of my past victory. And you know, David said, this God who delivered me, he saw God as the source of his victory. And let me tell you this day, your victory is not of man. He is he that seated on the throne. He is the source of your victory. I say he is the source. He is the source. He is the source. I don't know the giant in your life. On our way from Egypt to Canaan, you know, when Israel went from Egypt to Canaan, they contended with giants. It has not changed you. Since you got born again. And you are proceeding to Canaan. I know that you have contended with giants. And I speak to you. Have you forgotten the God of 1980? Have you forgotten the God of 1998? The God of 1998? The God of 2000? He that did it to you in 2003. He wants to do it again in your life. I am still talking to you about the God of your past victory. The God of my own past victory. He who answered. The God of Hannah. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. Ah. He is still the same God. I don't know the giant in your life. It can be the giant of sin. It can be the giant of self. It can be the giant of principalities. The giant of powers. The giant of rulers of darkness. The giant of spiritual wickedness. Whatever they are. Terrorizing you in the night. Not allowing you to sleep. They, 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 they want to do harm to you. I speak to you that the God of your past victory. God. Do you remember? Oh my God. Listen. Some years ago. 
you were in your mother's womb. You know, your victory did not begin today. Millions of years ago, I mean, some years ago, millions of spermatozoa started pursuing and over. Millions of spermatozoa. The rule of that game was this. One will win, others will perish. A day came when one spermatozoa grabbed the over out of the millions. Other millions perished. Other millions perished. Only one survived. Fertilized the ova. The ova became zygote. The zygote began to develop. Stayed in nine months. Nine months in the belly. And refused to be aborted. <laughs> hey! You are strong, oh? <laughs> You refuse to be aborted. You stayed here. Potential like you. With all the talents you have. You were confined to a woman's womb. You agreed. You stayed there. You were patient. Who told you that you don't have patient? Who told you you don't have patient? You have a lot of patient. You were there for nine months. You couldn't move out. You were there. And when you were there, you refused to be aborted. And you were born. Listen to me. Listen to me. You are a strong man. God has made you strong. Your victory did not begin today. If you sample your blood and take it to the spiritual laboratory, you will discover victory in your blood sample. Therefore, you have no reason to fear. You are going to conquer this battle. The devil will not defeat you. The giants will bow. They will bow. These giants will bow. Hey! Who are thou great mountain, says the river You shall become as plain. You will be a player. Who are thou? The mountain must be removed. The mountain must melt. If you don't remember what God has done in your life before, you will melt. You begin to melt be, 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 before, before uh, you know, when, when, you know, when the devil begins to scare you. That's why I said at the beginning of this message, you are too forgetful. If you remember what the Lord has done in your life in the past, hey, cool down, cool down. It is your time. It is your time to celebrate. It is your time to get a testimony. It is your time to celebrate. It is your time to manifest. It is your time. I say it is your time. He is the God. He is the God. The God of my past victory. He who healed me before. He who gave me victory. Are you worried about examination? You remember the God of your past success. He has come again. He will give you another success. Who is this God? You know him very well. Child. Do you know your problem? You don't know God. Tell your neighbor you don't know God. You don't know God. Shake your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you don't know God. If you know him and what he can do. This God has no beginning. I'm talking to you about the source of your victory. Your victory is not by mortal strength. Your victory is not by your financial muscle. Your victory is not by your academic prowess. Your victory is of God. He is the source of my victory. David saw it and he said, with the Lord. Hey! I can chase a thousand. Mm -mm. I am a single man. But with the Lord, who is the source of my victory. With the Lord empowering me. With the Lord strengthening me. I shall leap over the wall. Let's take a closer look at this God. The God of our past victory. He has no beginning. I say he has no beginning. Oh yes. If you say he began in the beginning, you are wrong. He has no beginning. Even the scripture does not seek to prove his existence. Because a God capable of being proved is not qualified to be God. But this God is immovable mover. He is uncaused cause. Uncreated creator. He came out one day without a raw material. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. I'm still talking about the God of your past victory. The God of my past victory. The God of my past victory. By the way, he's also a judge. He is a judge. 
You don't believe every other thing without believing that it's also a judge. The Bible that recorded that God is love also said that God is a consuming fire. If you fall into the hand of the devil, God will deliver you. If you fall into the hand of the police, God will deliver you. If you fall into the hand of the criminals, God will deliver you. But if you fall into the hands of God, who shall deliver you? No wonder the singer said, who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. I'm sure nobody. I'm sure nobody. I'm sure nobody. I'm sure nobody. You better don't mess with God. Tell, tell your neighbor, don't mess with God. Just tell your neighbor, don't mess with God. His power. The God of my past victory. You know, I, I was reading somewhere in the book of Isaiah. He talks about his strength and his power. In the book of Isaiah. He talks about him. The God of my past victory. In Isaiah 43, 13. He said, even from eternity I am he. And there is none who can deliver out of my hand. If God begins to judge you. No one can deliver out of the hands of God. And he said, I act. And who can reverse it? If I decide to lift you up, who can reverse it? If I decide to promote you, who can reverse it? If I decide to lift you, catapult you, secret meetings cannot stop it. He said, I act and no person will reverse it. If God acts on your behalf, the government cannot reverse it. If God acts on your behalf, the church cannot reverse it. If God acts on your behalf, even your community cannot reverse it. I'm still talking about the God of my past victim. God of my past victim. Who is he? He's an omniscience God. He knows your name. He knows your secret. He knows your tears. He knows your groanings. He knows your poverty. He knows your condition. He's so many present. He's everywhere. Even in the darkest place. He's at London. He's at New York. He's at China. He's at Korea. He's in Aust Australia. Even in at Russia. Even in South Africa. Even in the remotest village in Nigeria. Even in Lagos. Even in Nepal. Wherever. Even in Senegal. He is there. Are you worried about somebody taking care of your, your children abroad? You don't know God. He is everywhere. That God of your past victory. Who have been keeping them. Will keep them again. He's so many potent. Oh yes, he has the power to heal, the power to save, and the power to deliver. And let me tell you, I, 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 I like to say this all the time. I don't mind repeating it. This God of my past victory. There are three things he has never seen. He has never seen a sinner that he cannot forgive. Oh yes, even if you snatch a car under gunpoint, and you are listening to the sound of this message. God, you are a candidate of mercy. God is willing to forgive you. He's willing to cleanse you. Oh, yes. Yes, even if you are jumping from the house of prostitution and you're hearing this message, he wants to change your life. He doesn't want you to perish. He has never seen a sinner he cannot forgive. He has never seen a situation that he cannot change. He's unchangeable changer. The God of my past victory. He has never seen a sickness that he cannot heal. We will begin to look at the names of God. It opens our eyes to begin to understand this God of our past victory. The God of our past victory is Jehovah Jireh. The great provider. I call him the God of the zero hour. He is your final bus stop. He is your final bus stop. Oh yes. He is. The doctor is not your final bus stop. It's not your last hope. The God of our past victory. You know him? He will provide for you again. He will give you a surprise. And it shall be a positive surprise. He is Jehovah Rapha, the great healer. Listen to me. You know, the psalmist said, 103, verse 1 to 3, said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Don't forget his benefit. Oh, my brother, you forget too soon, too soon, too soon. He said, don't forget. He said, bless the Lord, my soul, bless the Lord. Forget not his benefit." Forget not how he answered you in the past. Forget not how he fought your battle. And he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? 
who crowns you with the loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the ego. Mm. God who has done that, and let me tell you, somebody has paid the price for your healing 2,000 years ago. That sickness has no legal right to remain on you. As you're listening to me, listen. Are you sick in the head, in the heart, in the stomach, any part of your body? I want to talk to you now. Listen to me. That sickness is an illegal occupant. And they must be given a quick notice. That disease is a giant. And it is time to kill giants. <laughs> this is the time to slay every giant. Every terrorist. Hear me. That thing that does not allow you to sleep is a terrorist. That sickness that does not allow you to sleep is a terrorist. And it is time to do away with it. It is time to claim your healing. It is time. Who is speaking? Who, 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 who will do it? The God of your past victory. He did it in the past. He did it for the ancients. He did it for the modern people. Both ancient and modern have experienced the healing power of God. Your own will not be. Your own will not be a different. He is Jehovah Rofeka. Jehovah Rofeka. He said in Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am your personal physician. I am your personal doctor. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid the name of, that the doctor called the sickness. The God of your path victory. He will heal you. He will heal you. His name is Jehovah Nisi. Mm. The Lord our banner. In Exodus 17, 8, uh, yes, 8 to 15. I want to tell you this day, the Lord will fight for you. Stop fighting for yourself. You wound yourself. Oh. You will wound yourself if you continue to fight for yourself. I say you will wound yourself. God want me to ask you this question. Do you want him to fight for you? While you watch him. Or you want to fight your battle while he watches you. If you fight your own battle. You shall be wounded. You will lose it. But Nisi will fight for you. The battle is not your own. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. Our peace. Oh my God. He is our peace. He is our peace. He will give you peace. Are you confused? God of our past victory is Jehovah Shalom. He will give you peace. He will settle you. I see him as Jehovah Sikenu. The Lord our righteousness. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is ever present. I see him as Jehovah Ra. The Lord our shepherd. And I want to draw your attention to something in Psalm 23. Look at the God of your past victory. He said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Oh, praise God. Praise God. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. Oh, yes. I want to tell you that this goal of your past victory, no matter what the economy is saying, he will lead you. He will cause you to lie down in green pastures. Even if you are transferred, God will land you onto green pastures. Even if you are transferred, he is sending you to a greener pasture. Listen, greener pasture, greener pasture, greener pasture. God is sending you to greener pasture. As you move in obedience, expect a greener pasture where you are going. I speak prophetically unto you. Expect that greener pasture. Greener pasture. He said, he restored my soul. He restores. Are you a backslider? Have you had spiritual somersault? Jehovah Ra is ready to restore your soul. Now, restore your soul from the pangs of death. Restore your soul from the pangs of backsliding. Restore your soul from destruction. He is willing to restore your soul. He will guide you in the path of righteousness. And he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
Well, you will walk through, but you will not have your permanent bedroom in the valley. <laughs> he didn't say you should have your permanent bedroom in the valley. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes you can see the shadow of death. It doesn't mean you're dying. Maybe what you're passing through, we are simply seeing the shadow of death. It doesn't mean you are going to die. It doesn't mean you are going to die. Shadow is different from reality. Shadow is different from reality. You are not dying now. Listen to me. You are not dying now. Listen to me. You are not dying now. It's just a shadow. A shadow. And you will pass through. Tell your neighbor, I'm walking through. Just say it. I'm walking through. You will walk through the valley. You will walk through. You will not dwell there. You will not inhabit there. You will not build your flat there. You will just walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And he says, I fear no evil. Why will he not fear evil? For thou art with me. Who is with me? The God of my past victory. The God who delivered me from the hand of the beer. The God who delivered me from the hand of the poor beer and the lion. He is, he is with me. And because he is with me, why will I fear Goliath? Goliath, I will not fear you. For Jehovah Ra is with me. He is with me, the good shepherd. I am his sheep. He knows how to take care of me. Uh -uh. He won't allow anything, any strange thing to come and terrorize me. And go home free. The Lord and the star they comfort me. Look at verse 5. Beautiful. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Wow. What is this? What is this? A table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Wow. Huh? Oh, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Something comes into my mind. If the man who said you will not build a house dies before you build a house, does it concern him? If a man who said you will never marry dies before you get married, does it concern him? If somebody who said you will never get a child dies before you get a child, does it concern him? If a man who said you never build in that plot of land dies before you build, does it concern him? Sometimes we don't know the scriptures. Thou preparest a table before me in their presence. Chidiokraf will not pray that those people who don't want my progress will die. They should not die. But in their presence. Listen, friend. In their presence. Hear the scripture again. Jehovah Ra will prepare a table before you in their presence. Those who say you will never build a house will attend the dedication of that house in their presence. Those who say you will never be promoted will be forced to write your promotion letter in their presence. In their presence. I say in their presence. Not in their absence. Not when they die. I want to announce to you. God is preparing a table. And the table that the Lord is preparing before you will be in their presence. They will see it. They will bite their finger. They will say, so you later were blessed. So you later had a child. So you later got married. So, hey, in their presence. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, they will see you walk into your glory. They will see you. They will, they will come to your testimony night. <laughs> they will be present they will be there the day your traditional marriage will be held they will be there in their presence I say in their presence in their presence you will see them the day you will be going home with your car you can even stop and say mama come in <laughs> papa come in you will carry them in their presence in their presence. I want to announce to you what God is planning for you and what the Lord is doing for you. The God of your past victory, he will do it in their presence. In the presence of those who do not want your progress. In the presence of those who are holding secret meetings against you. The Lord shall lift you up. The Lord shall catapult you. The Lord shall make you what he wants you to be. Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad your success is not in the hand of any man. Your victory is not in the hand of any man. Jehovah, Jehovah Ra is the source of your victory. He is the source of your blessing. You know why I like his table? If he makes a table, if, if people make a table, they will not make balanced diet. But if God prepares a table before you, he makes balanced diet for you. Look at Elijah. 
The Bible said the ravens brought to him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening. The raven did not bring bread and bread. He didn't bring, they didn't bring meat and meat. They brought carbo, protein and carbohydrate in the morning, protein and carbohydrate in the evening. What does it mean? God is interested in balanced diet. And I will tell you, he's interested in balanced diet. And I want to announce to you, the Lord is preparing a balanced diet, a balanced blessing. Yes, the blessing will come from the north, from the east, from the south, from the west. Oh, yes, in their presence, in their presence. I'm hearing a sound. As I talk to you, I hear a sound. It is the sound of abundance. As I talk to you, I hear a sound. It is the sound of a heavy rain. A heavy rain of abundance is coming upon you. There's going to be a mighty shower upon your life in their presence. Oh my God. In their presence. 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 He's launching you into the deep. Hey, young man, God is about introducing you. You will soon go public. You will soon go public. Hey! Orila Moshanteria Lababa. He's about showcasing you. He's about showcasing you in their presence. Those who wanted to nip you in the board. Those who wanted to stop your ministry. Those who wanted to stop you from becoming what God wants you to be. In their presence, you shall be lifted. In their presence, you shall be promoted. In their presence. In their presence. Not in their absence. They won't die. Oh. If you are praying for your enemies to die, you are a spiritual kindergarten. If you are praying, oh yes, for them to fall and die, you don't understand the scriptures. He said, thou preparest a table in their presence. Oh, in their presence. Well, in their presence. In their presence. In their presence. In their presence. And I want to tell you that this God of our past victory. In John 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible said in the beginning was the world. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. And the word dwelt among us. And the Bible said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, delivering people who are oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Mm -hmm. mm -mm 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 -mm. He came and died. And when he died, he died. He didn't faint. He died. I tell you, he died. Jesus died. But listen to me, God's people. After three days, the power of the grave could not hold him. He rose triumphantly. He rose triumphantly. And he lives. And because he lives, your healing is guaranteed. Because he lives, your success is guaranteed. Because he lives, Goliath must be destroyed. Because he lives, your deliverance is assured. Because he lives, your blind eye will get open. Because he lives, come on, lame man, you can stand up and begin to walk. Because he lives, the cripple shall be healed. Because he lives, your liver shall be recreated. Because he lives. I know he's alive. The God of my past victory. Buddha is in the grave. Shinto is in the grave. Confucius is in the grave. Mohammed is in the grave. But he lives. The God of my past victory. He lives. And because he lives, Chidi can face tomorrow. Because he lives, my fears are gone. Because I know he holds my future. And life is what I live in just because he lives. Don't be afraid of the thing that is against you. Be conscious of he that is with you. Mm. Somebody is with you. The Trinity is with you. You have a backup. Hey, backup. Back up by the Trinity. Swallow your fear. Come on. Throw your fear to the wind. Somebody is with you. And I want to announce to you this day. He has never lost any battle. <laughs> he has never lost any battle. He is a conqueror. He is a mighty conqueror. And you are hinging on him this day. Because he lives. He is the reigning name. If you are not yet born again. You better run into him and be safe. 
the God of my past victory. Woman, stop crying. Come on, clean your tears. Somebody is alive. The God of your past victory. He who answered you before. He who healed you before. He who brought you out of the confusion before. He who saved you from the robbers. He who covered you during the ember month. He who kept you from January to December 31st. Nobody has removed him from the throne. His power has not changed. Remember. Jesus the same yesterday. Today. And forever. He's walking right now. Bringing healing. Oh yes. I sense the presence of God. Let's get into prayers. I sense his presence. Oh my God. Let's begin to pray. I sense God's presence right now as I'm talking. The Lord is about doing something. God of my past to victory. He will change your sorrows into tears. Oh yes. He will change your sorrows into tears. He will change your confusion and give you peace. God of my past victory, come again and answer me. Oh my God. Victory ahead. Victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus. Victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord. I hear the conquest ring. By faith I see the victory. Ahead, don't see defeat. They are giant killer. God is anointing you today as a giant killer. See the victory ahead. Rise up. Lay your hands on that sickness. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Remember that sickness is a terrorist. Must be dealt with. You are you are circumcised. That sickness is uncircumcised. It is time. It is time. Can you feel the presence of Jesus in that room where you are? Can you feel the presence of Jesus in that car where you are right now? He is there. Oh my God. God is already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you have to do is to open up your heart for God. So already here. I'm not trying to be an emergency singer, but I feel like singing a song that is my spirit now. God is already here. Can't you feel his presence? Can't you begin to understand the location? He's already here to heal. He's already here to break the yoke. Jehovah Shammah is right here, right here, right here. The God of your past victory. Change your sorrows. Begin to give him the glory. It is settled. Hey! And then David summoned up courage. You know what he told Goliath? You come to me with bow, with arrow, with sophisticated weapon. Look at what he says. Oh my God. He said, David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Oh my God. I want you to begin to speak to the terrorists around you. The sickness and the disease. Anything that is attacking you, tell the thing by faith that today the Lord will deliver you into my hands. God is already doing it. He is already doing it. I can see it. I can feel it. I can experience it. You are getting the victory. The giants have been slaughtered. The giants have been slaughtered. And look at what he said. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel whom you taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. And I will strike you down. And remove your head from you. And I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the boss of the sky and the wild beast of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear. 
For the battle is the Lord. And he will give you into my hands. David said this. With a full confidence. A base. A base for his victory. He said the Lord will give you into my hand. David spoke. That which you believe in the heart. Speak it out. Make the decree. Say it out. Let somebody hear it. Let your friends hear it. Make a positive confession. Let people around you hear it. Third, God will give you victory. Speak out that the Lord is giving you victory in this battle. Speak out that you are, you are not going to die in this case. Oh, yes. And then, then it happened when the Philistine arose. David ran quickly through the battle line. David put his hand into his bag, took it from it a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine. There he fell. As Goliath fell, so is that giant terrorizing you. Fell. So has that giant fell. And you're having a victory. Bow your heads in prayer. Our Lord, we give you the victory. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If you're sick, just place your hand on this radio set or tape recorder or CD set. Just if you're sick, place your hand. If you're believing God for your healing right now, I sense God's presence. I sense God's anointing to touch you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Lord, I begin to pray. Yes, Lord, an anointing to slay giants will be released upon my brother, upon my sister. Oh, my God. I begin to pray that you raise our heart, that we will become conscious that you that gave us the victory in the past, that you want to heal again. You want to answer our prayers again. You want to set us out of confusion again. Oh, God of our past victory, we give you the glory for what you have done. As this your son gives you the glory, I begin to pray that he will begin to receive and receive and receive solution to his confusion or her confusion right now. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. And for people who obeyed and they are laying hands on this seat, on this step, on this city, Lord, let your healing anointing pass through this instrument today. Receive your healing. 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 Receive your peace. Receive answers to your prayers. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you, my co-partner in the Lord. You've been listening to your brother, Chidi Okraf. We're available for revival conferences and crusades and retreats to come and speak. Our contact address is 2 Ekuruke Street, Box 1990, Omaha, Abia State, Nigeria. Box 1990, Omaha, Abia State, Nigeria. And our telephone number remains 088-224-109. Or the GSM number 080-330-76980. GSM 080 Three three zero seven six nine eight zero. In case you're calling from outside Nigeria, you have to put our country code number two three four eight eight two two four one zero nine or two three four eight zero three three zero seven six nine eight zero. We love you. Our email address is chidocraft at hotmail dot com or a g o d i sixty four at yahoo.com god bless you abundantly we love you we are praying for you you can call us at any time feel free god bless you remember he is the god of your past victory and is willing to give you a present victory god bless